Intuitive Machines Nova C spacecraft has become the first American spacecraft to land on the moon since 1972. It wasn't without its tense moments, so how did it all play out? Stick around and let's dive in. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June, and before we go on, if you want to stay up to date with the latest goings on from the UK space industry and beyond, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. You can also follow me on X and support the channel on Patreon. Now, on to the news. Intuitive Machines 1 launched on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 at just after 6am UTC on Thursday the 15th of February 2024 from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This was following a scrub the previous day due to off-nominal methane temperatures prior to loading. And it was quite possibly the most anticipated launch of the year so far. Following another flawless flight, and return to landing site by the booster, Nova C was successfully deployed into translunar injection around 48 minutes after liftoff. From this point, a series of commissioning tasks got underway to reorientate the spacecraft, ensuring the solar cells faced the sun and equipment on board received adequate power, as well as sending signals back to Mission HQ. Equally, the Goon Hilly Tracking Station, based in the UK, confirmed all appeared well with this spacecraft and continued to monitor it through its five-day trip to the moon from there. Odysseus, as the spacecraft is named, took a direct ascent approach to the moon, much like the Apollo missions before it. It then entered lunar orbit on Wednesday the 21st of February following a 408 second burn from its Methalox engine, in turn becoming the first spacecraft to ignite a liquid oxygen, liquid methane engine in deep space. Some incredible images came from the spacecraft as it then circled the moon at an altitude of 92 kilometers. An orbit-raising correction maneuver was carried out over the following day before the big attempt, and flight controllers also chose to exercise the option of an additional orbit before attempting the lunar landing. Whether this was just a precaution or if there was a minor issue to check out, it wasn't immediately clear, but all still progressed well. That was until those UK-made LiDAR landing sensors developed issues and intuitive machines had to switch to using NASA's onboard Doppler LiDAR payload to guide it down. They also had to provide an impromptu software patch. So yeah, this really was a case of in-the-moment tech support. This provided tense moments indeed, as NASA's instrument wasn't designed to be used as the main landing sensor. But hey, when you're doing things on the fly, sometimes you've just got to work the problem. As Odysseus slowly powered its way down to the lunar surface, an onboard camera called Eagle Cam successfully dropped off the spacecraft at just 30 meters from the surface, as it aimed to capture the first ever third-person view of a lunar landing. Then, yes, the big one. At around 11.20 p.m. UTC on Thursday the 22nd of February 2024, the Nova Sea Odysseus landed in the Malapert A crater some 190 miles from the lunar south pole. It wasn't all plain sailing, as communications issues prevented immediate confirmation of the landing and various troubleshooting took place to reorientate and cycle antennas on board the craft, as well as asking Goonhilly Earth Station in the UK to jump in for extra tech support. After a tense near 30 minutes, the signal was found and confirmed the first successful US moon landing in over 50 years. We also need to give credit here to the amateur ham radio observers at AMSAT DL who also managed to successfully pick up a return signal from Odysseus. Interestingly, uh, during the landing sequence, there was an 8 degree off nominal roll also noted, but we're going to have to wait for a bit more data to come through before we can see if that actually caused any issues with the antennas. Now, the Malapert A crater was not Odysseus's original destination. Initially, the spacecraft was slated to land in Oceanus Procellarum, the largest basaltic plain, also known as a lunar maria, located on the western edge of the visible side of the moon. Instead, Malapert A is a relatively flat and safe region located within the heavily cratered southern highlands on the side of the moon visible from Earth. It's also located at the base of a heavily ridged mountainous region called Malapert Massif, the highest point being some 5,000 metres in height. 
the ability to study this region as a possible Artemis 3 landing area was too good an opportunity to miss, and it will also allow NASA to study whether the mountainous region can be used as a telecommunications base, given that it's an area that remains in near constant contact with the Earth all year round. Now, I talked about it in my last video, but on board was a suite of science payloads from NASA, as well as commercial ones, including a new temperature-resistant cloth developed by Columbia Sportswear, and 125 tiny moon sculptures sold via NFT. So for Odysseus itself, the Nova C design was developed by Intuitive Machines, inheriting technology from NASA's Project Morpheus. Its pressure-fed VR900 main engine, as we've already mentioned, uses methane and oxygen as liquid propellants, pressurized by helium gas to produce 4,000 newtons, or about 900 foot-pounds, of thrust. The lander structure is a hexagonal cylinder with six landing legs, and something tells me that those six landing legs did play a crucial role in meaning that Odysseus landed upright. There were also solar panels on board which can generate 200 watts of electrical power on the lunar surface. For attitude control, the spacecraft uses a helium reaction control system. So, nothing out of the ordinary here, but the fact that it all came together to land on the lunar surface is absolutely incredible. And yes, as mentioned before, as well as in my last video, UK companies have played a direct role in making this mission happen. The UK-based branch of Canadian company MDA, famous for their Canada Arm and the Space Shuttle, and Canada Arm 2 and the ISS, provided the landing sensors for the spacecraft. Now, these sensor packages are based on laser technology. The first was called LEA, or LiDAR for Extraterrestrial Imaging Applications, and it uses LiDAR to create 3D maps of surrounding features. MDA also provided their flare package for use on flatter, less risky ground. It's a full wave laser rangefinder, but this appears to have malfunctioned above the lunar surface. Quite what the problem is, we don't really know yet, so we'll wait for more data and information as the mission now progresses. Worthy of note is AAC Clydespace, having provided the PCDU, or the Power Conditioning and Distribution Unit, for the lander. And as mentioned earlier, Goonhilly Tracking Station. Yeah, unbelievable. They have kept a close eye on Odysseus throughout its flight, providing invaluable tracking data to intuitive machines, as well as confirmation of return signal from the spacecraft on the lunar surface. Odysseus will now spend the next seven days at least engaging its suite of science experiments and gathering as much data as possible. Like most craft these days, Odysseus is powered by batteries that are recharged by solar panels, and as such, it's not designed to survive the lunar night. However, if Japan's slim lander is anything to go by, then we'll know that you can never say never at Odysseus waking up after its enforced slumber. So, on board, the payloads for NASA are the ILO-X, which is an international lunar observatory, there is a laser retroreflector array, which is again similar in vain to those left by the Apollo missions. We also then had that navigation Doppler LiDAR for precise velocity and range sensing, and man oh man, what a crucial role that played in getting Odysseus down to the surface. We also have the Lunar Node 1 navigation demonstrator, stereo cameras for lunar plume surface studies, or scalps, radio wave observations at the lunar surface of the photoelectron sheath, or ROSES, and the Tiger I-1. So yeah, uh, can't wait to get some data back from these instruments, as well as more data from Intuitive Machines about that landing. But boy oh boy, massive congratulations to the whole team at Intuitive Machines, and also another shout out to Mario Romero, who also just so happens to be a fellow fan and member of fan group of my favourite band, Alkaline Trio. He's a former US Navy SEAL, an aerospace engineer, responsible for the assembly, integration, testing of Odysseus, as well as naming it. So yeah, this is an incredible, all-round awesome mission, and what an unbelievable achievement. I can't wait to see how this one plays out, and again, follow me on X for further updates as the next week progresses. Thank you so much for watching, I've been Tom June, and I'll see you next time.